Hey guys, I'm so excited to share today's project with you. We're gonna be making a leaning floor mirror. Now, if you've seen these online or in furniture stores, you know how expensive they can get. I was looking online and I was like, you know what? There is no way I'm ever gonna be able to get a hold of one of these. So let's go ahead and try to make our own. So Michael and I went about making our own and I'm gonna show you all the steps that we took. It was so simple and so easy. And we actually ended up using scraps from previous projects. So don't be afraid of that. You can always find reclaimed wood or you know whatever sort of scraps you can find and you can kind of piece it together and it can come out really cool. So that's what it's all about is making a unique piece that you are gonna love and it's gonna fit your personality and your home. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is a leftover piece of MDF uh, that Michael cut out um, from a previous project that we did. He's cut this out to fit the mirror that I have. I picked the mirror out first, so let me show you that. So this is a beveled edge mirror that I picked up at Lowe's. It was about uh, $27, I believe. Um, but it's nice quality and it's fairly thick. And what I wanted here was a five inch border all the way around or a five inch frame. So that's the size that we're gonna be doing. You can just go to the long point there and make a mark. And then put your square on there. And that's a 45 angle there. So I'm gonna, well that's called a miter. I'm gonna miter the corners with the trim. I've already cut this down to five inches wide. And now a person could use a miter box. Uh, if they yeah. don't have an actual miter saw, uh, I mean, we don't have a miter saw either, and you're just using a... Skill saw. Skill saw. Circular saw. But yeah, they make little hand saws that you put the material in there mm -hmm. and you can cut it. Miter box. Or you can just go square. You can make them square and the next one butt into it. Make that cut for all four corners, and hopefully uh, the miters come in together. I wanted to create an aged, kind of weathered look to the wood, so I used a solution of white vinegar, which I poured into this glass mason jar. I filled it up halfway with the white vinegar, and then I used this ultra-fine steel wool. I dropped in just one piece. You could unravel it if you want, but I just dropped it right in there. And then I placed the cap back on just lightly. You don't want to tighten it. It needs to be able to breathe. Now take a look at this nasty looking solution here. This is my vinegar and steel wool. Um, there's still some, oops, the, the lid is uh, not on there tight, which by the way, you don't want to put the lid on there super tight because um, what happens here, the reaction is it does produce um, gases which need to be able to escape. Um, so you don't want to have the lid on tight, otherwise I don't, I don't know what might happen. <laughs> it might blow up or something, I don't know. Uh, so be careful with that and yeah, so that's why I just put the lid on there really loosely and uh, we're gonna go ahead and add some water. I'm gonna fill this up with water because actually I want it to be a 50-50 solution. And I know some people leave this in here, like it, they leave it for about 24 hours and then they use it. Well, I actually left it in here for three days. So I don't know if it's gonna be too dark or not, but we're gonna find out. Add some water in there. Now, I, I did check this out um, each day to see kind of what it was doing, and after I left it in for the first 24 hours, I looked and it just didn't seem like uh, enough of the steel wool had dissolved. Um, like, the color, the color of the liquid was still fairly clear, so that's why I felt like it was okay to leave it in there for an extra, you know, day or two. I've got my crazy, icky-looking mixture here of half vinegar, half water, and half steel wool. Now, if it turns out that I don't like this, the look of this, like if it's too dark or something, that's okay, because I was kind of on the fence about whether I should stain it or paint it white. So this is all just an experiment. Looks like it's changing pretty fast. So we're painting along the edge of the EDF too. So right along there. It's not taking it as well. So we'll see, I might have to go back over that and paint it. What we might do after this gets a chance to dry because I'm only gonna be able to see how the color really turned out, like how light or how dark it is after it finally dries. Because right now it's still wet, so it looks extra dark. But if it does turn out to be 
darker than I want, then we may mix up a white wash and kind of paint that over it. So we'll see. While it's still wet, I do want to show you what it looks like before. So we'll do the before and after. Let me flip a board over so you can see. So if you can see what that looks like now, here's what it looked like before. Look at that. Fresh and clean. Suddenly it is, well, weathered and well, fairly dark, so we're going to just see what that looks like after it's a chance to dry. So we're going to make a uh, whitewash. Stir it up. I don't know what the ratio is. This is just kind of an eyeball it thing. So we're going to put in some about yay amount of paint. And then put in some water. Oh, look, look at that piece. That piece, I think, came out really neat. Um, you know, except it's got a little rust spot there, but uh, that's okay. But it's funny because the wood all came out different, like all four pieces. So that's part of the variables about wood, because I guess if it starts out slightly different color, then it takes a little bit differently. But. Um, I think this should help even everything out. Um, so we're going to be gluing the boards down using this tight bond wood glue. Yeah, and if you don't have uh, clamps, you can just put a weight. So I just pulled the mirror out of there because that's not glued down yet. And now we're finishing up with the final piece up top here. So now all of the frame part is glued down. So now Michael's applying the mirror mastic. Now he's smoothing out some of those glue blobs, the high profile ones, just so it's not too bumpy under there. So now we're just pressing the mirror down gently, just to make sure it really locks onto that mirror mastic. And that was all there was to it. It was so easy, and the fact that we were able to utilize pieces and scraps from a previous project really worked out, and it can save you a lot of money. So this is it. I love the, uh, the kind of gray wash to it. It just really reminded me of a French country cottage kind of finish, you know, that sort of distressed look. So that worked out really well. I'm really stoked with it, and I'm so happy to finally have a full length mirror. I love using the kind of raw cedar because it really brought out, um, you know, it, a uniqueness to each piece. Uh, so it's not, you know, completely uniform, and that's what makes ma makes doing these yourself really special because you can come up with sort of whatever look you like. If you like a lot of knots in it, or if you want to use pine or some other type of wood, you can totally do that. It's really just about what you like. So I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go now. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!